Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the purpose of a governor on a helicopter. Let's get started. So in a helicopter, one of the big challenges that we have is maintaining a certain amount of lift with changing conditions. Uh, the reason this gets so challenging is unlike an airplane where we have a little wing and we can basically kind of tweak the yoke a little bit, we have a wing too, but our wing spins at about 500 RPM and it has a very, very fine angle of attack depending on what we want to achieve with it. Now to make that thing even more complicated, it's spinning. To make it more complicated, you've got all sorts of weather and all sorts of nasty stuff basically blasting you in the face that's going to be impacting what that's doing at any given time. Now, I don't know about you, but that seems like it's a lot of work to try to keep all that balance, which is why pilots, or helicopter pilots, or helicopters, have a tool to help us maintain a constant RPM without us fiddling, and that's called the governor. So on most helicopters, you do have a throttle control. You actually see that I have a throttle control right here, and it actually is an adjustable throttle control. Now, also on many helicopters, you have something called a governor. What it's going to try to do is it will automatically manipulate the throttle for the purposes of trying to maintain the appropriate rotor RPM, which of course, in some helicopters, we can beep up and down. Let's take a look at this in action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly lift the collective up. We're going to be taking a look over here real quick. We're going to take a look over here real quick, and we're going to take a look up very, very carefully here. Now, if I slowly lift this collective up, what I'm going to be doing is increasing the bite that my rotor is going to be taking out of the air. Now, a bunch of things happened all at the same time when you saw that. First of all, you probably noticed we got a little light on the skids there. But one thing you probably observed is the fact that my rotor remained 1 RPM, my engine remained 1 RPM, and you also noticed that my manifold pressure, which is basically going to be a measure of of my throttle position has gone up quite substantially. Now, if I continue to go ahead and apply a little bit of collective here, you could see my uh, throttle or can see has actually opened itself all the way up to almost half throttle again, atmospheric pressure at around 30 or so, but my RPM has remained more or less constant. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically burning that real, real hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce my collective one more time like that. So it kind of uh, settles in, that looks pretty good. It's kind of a chilling at sort of an RPM here. Looks pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and um, disable the governor. So I'm going to come up here. I've got my little governor control real quickly. I'm going to go ahead and click that little switch real fast, and I'm going to disable it completely. Now, with the governor off, there's nothing maintaining the RPM. It's actually going to be my responsibility. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and slowly pull my collective up. And what you're going to observe is two things. Uh, first of all, you probably notice that uh, my load is not changing, but you can see my propeller RPM or my rotor RPM, while well, we do have one in the back, is actually dropping dramatically. Uh, you can see here that if I can continue to increase that load, you could actually watch it. And all of a sudden, now we're getting a low RPM warning because there's nothing to increase the throttle setting. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, oh, just uh, reach your other hand and go ahead and increase the throttle. Why don't you just put it up to about 15? I think 15 was about what we had before. Well, that's fine. But now my rotor blades are completely stalled. Now, you'll notice that without that governor, if um, I don't do anything, all our helicopter does is it basically gets a runaway condition. So uh, my rotor right now is just kind of ripping along and I'm sitting here at 15 inches and we're just basically just chilling here. Uh, now, if I wanted to try to get this thing into the air, oh boy, this is, this is going to be bad. This is going to be real bad. Uh, oh, I have to increase throttle at the same time. Oh, okay, so I've got one hand on the throttle, I've got one hand on the stick, and I've got my other hand on the collective, and they're doing this impossible dance right now, attempting to try to keep all those things even there. Let's see if we can hold it with a hover here. Oh my gosh. Oh my, no, 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 no. Okay, so this is requiring me to quickly, rapidly change the position. Oh, no, no, you don't. No, you don't. Nope, nope, nope. You can see my RPM is basically panicking right now. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh boy. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, bring this thing back to the ground gently here. Oh, okay. That's pretty scary. Let's go ahead and uh, turn the governor back on here. All right, governor. Governor's going to automatically kick in. I got to wait until it gets to the RPM where the governor basically overrides the uh, throttle position here. Come on. There we go. So now the governor's uh, taken back over here. Whoa, <laughs> that's a lot of work. Let's go ahead and try that again this time. There we go. It's much, 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 much smoother. And you can see here, uh, now that we've gotten ourselves a little tiny bit of altitude, really not a lot of drama going on here. Uh, the thing uh, climbs itself up quite nicely. I've got myself just a little bit of altitude, and you can see automatically everything is basically running itself pretty smoothly. No problem at all. 
Now you're sitting here going, wow, this would be a pretty hard without one of those. The answer is, yeah, it'd be really hard without one of those. Now, one of the interesting things you'll probably find out about helicopters is that in the early days, we didn't have governors. We had uh, basically collimators. And the purpose of those were basically, as I pull the collective up, it just opens the throttle. And the idea was you could basically kind of tune them. But as you know, throttle load isn't proportional, isn't perfectly proportional to basically rotor load. And it, it gets so messy. It gets so messy. So we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, one more little thing with the governor that people probably didn't think of. And uh, that's what happens in an emergency situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this thing going a little bit here. I'm being a little rough with it. Sorry, Robinson. Sorry, sorry. You make a great helicopter. I'm sorry I'm being so mean to it. You should always respect your aircraft. You Got to get to about 60 knots if you're going to do anything with auto rotation. Now, one of the cool things here is um, now that I'm kind of cruising around, I've got plenty of air moving through the rotor. Um, it's a fairly stable helicopter. Again, I could probably reduce this to about 12 inches of power here, and we'd be perfectly fine. We could basically maintain about 70 knots, which is uh, what I'm trying to hold here. Now, one of the cool things is, is that when you're practicing what they call an auto rotation, where we're basically going to pretend our engine died and we have to stick the thing on the ground, to be honest with you, there's no real good place to put it on the ground <laughs> right now. <laughs> probably head over to the beach before I do something stupid here. Uh, one of the things you would do, of course, is you just engage the governor basically for the purposes of enabling you to uh, get that to let go. And uh, one of the things you would do is you'd watch your, of course, RPM drop on one side. And then, of course, you'd watch your um, a rotor speed try to maintain it in the green arc uh, during that entire operation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of line myself up with the beach here. I'm not going to promise that this is going to end smoothly or anything like that. One of these days, I'll finally get clever and I'll actually bind a button to it. So I can just click it. So let's go ahead and uh, kill my power here. All right, I'm looking for about 60 knots here. Yeah, golf courses are good enough for me. It's about 100. That's actually pretty good. And you'll notice. Not go over a little fast, a little fast. A little fast, a little fast. Transition to hover. Oh, not going to win any awards for that one, but you can see that without the governor, we're able to exercise little practice exercises like that because, of course, we're able to basically uncouple the engine from the rotor itself. Enjoy.